Hey everybody out there, Boru Masters all around the world. It's Vaughn here, the founder of Boru Mastery. Happy, happy Easter. I have my little pen here because I'm uh, waving it around because I wanted to give a massive shout out, first of all, to a whole bunch of people. Uh, and if I miss your name, I apologize, but uh, you know, I've noticed a lot of you commenting and thank you to Debbie, uh, Linda, Lizzie Waits, Carol Michelson Yates, Diane, Terry Portia, awesome to have you as part of one of my members as well. Lunker, David, Mark Ashton, and there's so many of you, uh, Julie, that are just commenting and being amazing out there. And uh, I wanted to thank you. And I hope these videos are helping you. you know, give me a little like, give me a little share below. Let me know, do you like these rants? Because I'm going on one today. You best believe it. How to know if you're really and truly a committed dancer or just interested in dancing. Now, why is this important? Because you've got to stop lying to yourself. Listen, self-deception is like the easiest thing that we do to ourselves. It's not, it's not that you don't lie to yourself. It's like, how do you lie to yourself? You know, and what capacity and what level? Because some people are so blinded by the narrative in their head, the story in the loop about maybe why they could never be the dancer they could be, Right or why they're held back in their own life about anything. There's a narrative, there's a loop. And if you've never heard of this idea before, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy deals with this a lot. Essentially, there's a story going on like a movie playing out about why things are happening. And you know, maybe that's on the negative side of life or maybe it's on the positive side. Um, but it's always gonna be tilting towards an angle that's either serving you or holding you back. And the way to think about this, about commitment, uh, I like thinking about it, and this is a shout out to my, my English friends out there. Uh, the English, uh, you know, have the, the good old fashioned English breakfast. You have a look on the plate, you've got bacon, you've got egg, you've got some toast, you've got mushies. Uh, if you're from Yorkshire, some Yorkshire pudding maybe. Um, you've got hashies, of course, and tomatoes. Now, on the dinner plate, like, do you think the pig was more committed than the chicken? Or was the chicken more committed than the pig? Right? Think about it. Well, the chicken was just interested, wasn't he? He just lays the eggs when he feels like it, you know, pops them out, off you go. But the pig lays his life down for that breakfast, you know, and we've got to ask ourselves, are we the chicken or are we the pig up in this one? Because if you're lying to yourself, you might be saying to yourself that you're committed in your dancing, but your results and the way that you show up reflect you're merely interested and then there's a massive disconnect because you're not achieving the results that you could be because of not only that lie, but because the behaviors you're involved in aren't going to produce the dance results that you seek. Uh, so what's an example of this? Well, you know, maybe somebody's uh, saying to themselves, you know, I'm really committed to my dancing, yet they've had a lesson booked every single week, but they've only turned up to like two out of the four in a month, right? And, and there's always a reason, right? Like there's always a legitimate reason. Don't get me wrong, you know, of course there's a legitimate reason. My, my cat was sick. My, my fish I had to take into the vet. You know, uh, uh, you know I, traffic, you know, how could I possibly get through traffic to get to here, right? Or my ankle hurts, you know, or whatever it may be. The point is this, when you have more excuses than reasons, you're never going to win. But when you have more reasons than excuses, you'll always win. So think about it. Do you have more excuses as to why things are not working out? Maybe it's money, right? I hear all the time, money, money, money. Listen, you're never going to get me on your side when it comes to money. I guarantee you, I have spent way more on dancing than you'll ever spend, like at least six figures. It doesn't make me better. What I'm saying is that that's what commitment looks like on the real. Commitment shows up in two places, your checkbook and your calendar. And of course, with a coach in hand right? Checkbook, calendar, coach. That is how you know commitment. If you're interested in something, you're merely going to be doing it when it's convenient. Like when you feel like it, right? Like I feel like training. And I made a video, check this one out. It was on how the brain works and how it rewards you to train and why you shouldn't wait to feel motivated or inspired before you begin. It's very important. But part of that is because you're merely interested in doing it. Like, and don't get me wrong, we're all interested to some degree into something. But I'm talking here to people who want to be committed dancers and who really want to do something outstanding and special with their own unique talents, skills, and abilities. Um, I believe there's a place for you to be greater than what, you're, what you are currently um, outputting 
in your own dancing, whatever that is. I don't care about your age. I don't care about your past experience. I don't care if you just started dancing now um, or you've been doing it for 50 fucking years. Like there, you can be better than you are right now, but it's going to require commitment. Now, commitment does not ultimately mean sacrificing your entire being and your entire existence and living hand to mouth just to dance. But that may be the level you want. Every single professional dancer I know that was the level of their commitment. That's what we needed to do to get to the level we wanted to do. You don't need to do that if you're just a weekend competitor, right? But do your excuses have a grip over your results? And are you lying to yourself about that, right? Do a reality check on yourself because the more you can be honest with yourself, the easier it is to navigate the terrain of the plan you need to create to achieve the goals you want to create, right? Because there's, no, there's a massive disconnect between having, say, a goal to be at a certain you know, high, high level, but then you look back and the, the, the actions you have are absolutely not in harmony with that goal. You know, what's an example of that? Let's say someone wants to become a professional dancer, yet they're, they're complaining every week about 20 bucks for a group class. You're never gonna be a pro if that's your attitude, ever. I don't give a shit how good you think you are. You won't be, because you should be in every group class you're allowed into begging to clean the studio, begging to stay up later, begging to go in earlier. You should be volunteering your time to be in the class helping out. You should be paying to volunteer, right? Like that's the commitment level of a professional. Do you understand what I'm saying? An interested person is only gonna do it when they feel like it and when it's convenient, right? And so if that's okay if that's you, but don't be surprised when the reality of dance and what you want slaps you up in the face and it's just like, you're not getting anywhere, you're not any good, and yeah, you've spent money and three years down the track, you're not any better, right? Because that's what interest does. It holds you in place and it gives you a safety net or a comfort zone for you to be in where, you know, well, maybe I don't ever get to explore my full potential. I never really get to see what I'm made of. I never really take the risk of being ridiculed, judged, or humiliated if I really go for it, right? But that's the price you pay for being interested. You go nowhere and you become nothing. If you're committed though, man, so much is open to you. Like you don't even know what you could possibly do with yourself if you really gave it a crack. So what I recommend you do as, a, as an action call to this is Give yourself seven days, 30 days, one year of the highest level of commitment that you possibly can muster, but be consistent in it. You know, a lot of people, and this is part of the lie. I see a lot of people say they're committed to the thing. I sacrifice a lot for this thing. And, and, you know, you don't know my story and I've got all these excuses as to why I can't do it and they're real and legitimate and that's fine. But they hold themselves back because they're not consistent in the commitment. So it's all good if it's in the diary, but if you aren't showing up, you're not consistent, right? If you're not making up for the time, you're not consistent. And so if you're not consistent, it's very hard to be committed because you might be committed in your head and your heart, and that's fine. That, I'm not saying that I think that's a confusion with passion, right? Like you're confusing a passion for dancing with the reality of commitment to be the best dancer you can be, right? Are you feeling this message? Like, let me know what you think. Challenge me on the message, I don't mind. But this is what I sort of have surmised from coaching and working with people. And by the way, program coming out, I'm gonna get you on the list. Give me a little boom if this sounds of interest to you. It's gonna be more like this. But side note, coming back to commitment and interest, which one are you? Are you committed? Or are you just interested in what you're doing, playing it safe? You know, hoping to tiptoe safely to death. Where are you at on your scale? And if you are committed legitimately, like you're not lying to yourself, you're not bullshitting yourself, you know, like, hey, I'm giving the best I can with what I've got. I've got a lot of time restrictions, fair enough. I've got a lot, an income restriction, fair enough. But I'm willing to do this per week and I'm sticking to it. If that's your level of commitment, I honor you, great. Here's my challenge to you, step it up. Add one more day in, add one more hour in, do something at home. It doesn't have to cost you money. It'll cost you time. I mean, look, commitment makes a time commitment, time sacrifice, but what is a sacrifice? A sacrifice is this. It is not something that you give up and you become a martyr about. It is the death of your old identity for the rebirth of a new one. It's like a phoenix rising from the ashes. What are you ultimately doing? You are giving up something of a lower concern today for something of a higher nature tomorrow. In dancing, for example, it is the, the ability of releasing a weak skill and creating a new one. It's the, uh, the letting go of watching Netflix 
so that you can step onto the dance floor and become a lot better and then you can showcase that to the world and you can be fulfilled and happy in that moment knowing that you didn't let your interest in dancing get the better of you and didn't let Netflix win. So listen, this is Vaughn. I honor you. Go be more committed. Put it in the calendar. Put it in the checkbook. Hire a coach. Work with me on this online. Do this every week, right? Write out what you're going to do. Share it with someone. Be accountable to it. Note when you're being interested in it because how do you know if you're interested? Your feelings are going to dictate what you do when you follow it more than the commitment level you've committed to and the consistency you need to stick to. That's how you'll know. You'll be able to measure it. It's very easy to know and fundamentally just know that if you're lying to yourself about your commitment level, you're never going to win. But I'm in your corner. I'm helping you to win. This is Vaughn. And I look forward to helping you master the art of boredom dancing and you to become the best that you can be. Thank you.